for now. Dave McMiniman does a phenomenal mm-hmm. job covering your Los Angeles Lakers and the NBA at large for us here at ESPN. So I sent you guys the same uh, meme. I sent I sent Dave the same one. Of uh, basically, I envision the reaction of the Lakers um, reacting to Bronny hitting a three in LeBron's eye, like that meme or that gif where basically there's that one kid just sitting there like, yeah, I did that. And then all the other kids are like going, whoa, around him. Like that, McMiniman, that's how I envisioned what went down in El Segundo today. Yeah, I think that is the way I pictured in my mind when Anthony Davis was describing it. Now, here's my little... uh, Everyone listening can play the smallest violin in the world for me, but I'm going to complain as a reporter because we're supposed to get some access to be able to see parts of practice. I would love to be able to describe to you what I saw with my own two eyes, uh, but many NBA teams kind of skirt around that rule. But the way Anthony Davis described it, my takeaway is for any guy in year 22 who's 39 years old, you're not often going to get him – so excited in a practice or he's going to want to prove himself, <laughs> especially, you know, yeah. when it's the you know, the preseason, these games don't matter. The 82 game season before you even get to the playoffs, how are you going to get those guy that guy to like get up for it? And man, if you're going to get this engaged level of LeBron from what we're hearing from Anthony Davis, then the, <laughs> the Brody picks worth it just in that respect, let alone what he's going to turn out as a prospect on his own. You know, Dave, it's so funny you just said that because I think the same thing. In other words, we can all sit here, and a lot of people did, including George. I mean, of course I didn't, but George and ridicule this pick. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but the thing is, is this. I think having Bronny on the team and even what we're talking about, Bronny hitting a three over LeBron today, I think LeBron's going to be a much happier than ever LeBron James. And if he's happy... He might even be better. What do you think about that? Listen, I mean, I know I'm going to get in trouble with the Laker fans out there who think I'm a homer, but, I mean, that's a plausible scenario to look at this season, that you get an engaged and happy and healthy LeBron. The ceiling changes for this team. And I can tell you this. I mean, that you could say that that's implausible and that's, wearing the rose-colored glasses, but being around the guy for more than a decade, his moods are felt by everybody in the building, both positively and negatively. He has the ability to, if he doesn't like the kind of group that he's with, you won't get the best version of LeBron. And, you know, sometimes he does it to exert influence over the front office to make them feel compelled to make a change, to make the roster better. Right now, you've had LeBron saying, I'm willing to take a pay cut to make this team better. And when it didn't happen, he said, hey, sometimes it doesn't go that way. you got to get people willing to take a pay cut. But we tried. And on top of that, he goes out yesterday, he goes out of the way to say, hey, Lakers, great job re-signing Max Christie. Like, this is a different level of buy-in that I've seen from LeBron James, I would say, in any other training camp other than 16-17 in Cleveland when he had a chance to repeat. Uh, Yeah, look, I would say, Dave, that I would echo some of those sentiments in the sense of when he was talking at Media Day, it felt like as engaged as he'd been in one of those scenarios in a very long time, to your point, right? Like, because he was talking about Bronny and just kind of the significance of it. And look, I do think the Olympic conversation was something he was engaged in talking about. But, you know, a lot of these things, after year 22, like, Media Day is kind of like, all right, let's just get through it, basically, more than anything else. And I I just felt like a different vibe from him in general. And maybe, Cappy, and you are going to be right that this is going to be one of those seasons where, even if it doesn't break their way, and I do think he still wants to win championships, obviously, I still think that there will be um, some level-headedness to this all because of the significance of it all. I mean, there's that meme, right, where it's two guys on the same train and one guy is towards the the wall side and he's looking out the window and there's this kind of dark, dreary tunnel that he's looking at. And the other passenger is out looking out the window towards the vista that you can see the skyline and you see the trees. And the guy's looking out of the trees, 
he's happy as can be. And the guy looking at the side of the tunnel looks like he's in an insane asylum. Right. But they're on the same ride. Yeah. And you could have a Lakers season that's 47 and 35 that feels like, man, I enjoyed tuning into that team. And you have a season that's 47 and 35 that feels like misery. And listen, I think if LeBron's going to be bought in and sharing the joy with his teammates, this team's feeling still might be a second round team, but it could feel a lot better than, than a team that, that loses in the second round. And you're like, man, why did I waste so many nights of my year tuning into them? <laughs> Dave, it's funny you say that because you're right. There's a feel. And, and already things have a different feel. You know, we were talking before you came on about Austin Reeves and his comments about it seems like already J.J. has created a structure, kind of my word, not necessarily his, that perhaps the team didn't have in the past. And Austin Reeves made it seem like things are operating at a whole different frequency because of that. What can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, certainly there's been – a half dozen comments from players thus far without specifically naming names when it came to the last coaching staff, but letting it be known that they're, they are embracing the approach that currently stands. That's very detail oriented. That is very thorough that while being thorough is still cognizant of being efficient with their time. And it seems like that approach is very refreshing you know, Austin had kind of the, the most smoking gun of all the quotes that I'm referring to, where he said, last year we kind of won on talent uh, and didn't really have as much organization around it. And when you have talent plus organization, that can get you to another level. Anyway, that's the closest anyone's really come towards throwing dirt on Darvin Ham's name thus far. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, it's not going to do anybody any good to rehash what went down with the, the previous coaching staff. The bigger point of it is they're coming into this one feeling like they have a chance and feeling like they can do something. I mean, Rui Hachimura said, hey, we could win a championship. He's the only guy to say it thus far that I've heard, but you didn't really hear that a lot last year. Uh, right. So I think that that's a change right there. Dave McMiniman hanging out with us here. What do you think? Like, the West is loaded. It's crazy. There's going to be young teams kind of potentially ascending. Uh, there's some older teams descending. Where do they fit the Lakers kind of in this Western Conference? I think a reasonable high bar for this team would be the fourth or fifth seed, and that's a high bar, right? Where I think they'll end up, probably six or seven. But you could also say if there's bad luck and last year LeBron and AD both played 70-plus games and they still ended up in the play-in, um, you could say that was maybe an anomaly and maybe this year the role players are healthy but the stars aren't and you fall down a little, little bit more and now you're playing in the 9-10 game. I, I think anywhere 4-10 to 10 is a reasonable range. and I think wow. it will just kind of come down to how the season breaks and, you know, come – February, if they are in that, you know, say four to six range, will there be a motivation even more so for the Lakers to part with one of those future first round draft picks to give this team a little bit more boost? Dave, I'm curious. Um, I feel like there's so much more confidence uh, in J.J. Redick, and I'm not really sure why because he hasn't coached a game yet. <laughs> right. do, you, do you sense that? And do you have a reason why that might be? I will give J.J. credit in terms of he hit the ground running. He gets off of the job a few days after the NBA Finals finishes. And even though he was bringing his family out from the East Coast and you know, just kind of dealing with the lifestyle change of going from doing something akin to what we do for a living to doing what he's doing now, he spent a ton of time around these players over the off season And – you know, well, I guess today is technically the second day of training camp. You talk to most of these guys, and it feels like they've been in some version of a training camp for a month. And I think that was an excellent approach from J.J. because he already had some buy-in before we're actually officially beginning, quote-unquote. And, um, again, I, I do think everything 
changes come October 22nd and the wins and losses actually count. Um, that brings a whole new level of, of stress uh, to the proceedings. But for now, um, I, I think the praise that, that JJ has been receiving from his players is earned because he's put in a lot of time since he got the job. Dave, with the second apron and all the, I guess, the challenges that teams face, particularly teams with, uh, you know, multiple superstars who make a lot of money, right? Like you have, it, there's more emphasis now in the NBA than ever for development from within. And they have some young guys in this roster. I've been fairly bullish on Max Christie. Uh, even the previous regime was at least openly bullish about him, although they didn't play him all that much, but they were vocal about it rather. Um, where do you think they're going to win in the margins with this team? Like, who are some of the guys that you think could be in that nine-man rotation that J.J. Redick discussed? Well, I'd say, like, three guys who did relatively nothing. I'll add four because the guy wasn't on the, on the, the team last year. Four guys who, like, really weren't counted on for anything last year were Max Christie, Jackson Hayes, Jalen Hood, Shafino, and then obviously Dalton Connect being the guy who they added through the draft. Those are like four complete variables that we don't know. We know that they have athleticism, and we know that the Lakers sought all of them out in, in various ways and brought them here because they wanted them, and that's about it. And so can those four players with – some health on their side with a coaching style that fits their game uh, and an opportunity to get minutes, make this team better. Maybe like that, that's a big, maybe uh, to me, I think it's still asking kind of a lot for unproven players to stamp them as they're going to be providing um, something that the team didn't have last year. I, I think where I'm more at is, the two guys who were injured for the bulk of the year in Gabe Vincent, who proved himself to be a very effective player on a very good team in Miami that made the finals and Jared Vanderbilt, who to me, even as, as much as like, you know, LeBron can influence how the rest of the guys play with his energy. And so can AD Jared Vanderbilt, I think maybe have has that aspect of his game more so than anybody because his activity, you see it, it lifts up the other guys to want, to, you know, make sure that they are really hitting uh, the cutter as a health defender because they just saw Jared scramble around the floor for 18 of the 24 seconds on the shot clock. And they're like, well, I, I better bring that a little extra effort on my end too. Um, those guys, I think I can talk myself into them being contributors that didn't exist last year. Uh, and then if they get really lucky, yeah, those, those younger guys could add to the mix too. All right, Dave, last thing for me. On October 22nd, when the Lakers tip off the regular season against Minnesota, how many minutes into the game until the sixth man comes into the game, that being Bronny James? You know what? I'm, I am still computing how this is going to play out because mm -hmm. you can't tell me that he's going to be the sixth man this year. You just no, no, I'm just no, saying that, that he'll, yeah, he'll – yeah. no, 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 but I think he'll be the first sub in – for the symbolism of the situation and why oh, not you get really it done? Buy this. I thought oh, you were yeah. joking. Yeah, no, no, I get you were it just done. Doing cappy stuff. No, 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 get it done in the first game and and let there be a, a, a historic moment at home. Well, I, I will say this, Dave. I do think I get the sense that this will happen while there's no quote unquote timeline for it. I think they want to do it sooner rather than later. Is my feeling? Yeah, I mean the. G League schedule, I think, starts around November 7th. So yeah. you certainly think it's going to happen before then. And I do think it's going to happen in Los Angeles, even though the Lakers do play a game in Cleveland uh, about a week into the season. That Cleveland! Is this is for you! Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> but I, I do think it will cheapen the moment if it doesn't feel somewhat earned. Like, if you do it ceremonial first pitch style – where he comes in in the first half of opening yes. night just to yeah. play the last two minutes of the second quarter because Salt Connect has three fouls. I, 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 I don't know. I, you'd like to feel like it, it was somewhat earned. And also you would like to have them order so they can make something happen and not just 
he comes in, gets two minutes, and it's zeros across the stat line everywhere else. Right. No, yeah. I'm looking for an alley oop to, to LeBron, like immediately. <laughs> Cappy wants the yeah, but, Sports uh, Center top ten you know, number like, one guys, highlight. Yes. You guys, this, I'm going to veer into the insensitive category, so please save me <laughs> if I sound too obtuse. But you guys have seen the videos of a high school team where there's someone at the end of the bench who might not have all their faculties and they're put into the game. Right, they and let them go. everybody watches and yeah. they let them go and, and miss seven <laughs> shots in a row and then they finally score and everybody goes nuts. Yeah. You don't want it to feel like that. You know right. what I mean? You don't Agreed. want it to feel like that. Yeah, Agreed. Uh, Dave McMiniman does a phenomenal mm-hmm. job covering your Los Angeles Lakers and the NBA at large here at ESPN. All right, Dave, thanks for the time, brother. Uh, we will be talking to you plenty, I'm sure. So uh, safe travels yes, uh, when you get going. So, All right, see you guys soon. All right, Dave. Bye, man.